Hey guys, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this is part 9 of our video series on creating a point-and-click game in Unity. So we've been spending the past 8 videos kind of getting this network ready, getting the thing, getting our camera to move around, being able to control where we're looking, um, really in the hopes of getting to this point where then we can dive into our nodes and um, start really customizing them and creating the interaction that makes this kind of adventure game really interesting. And this should be the last video in our series on working with the network. From here, we're going to be getting into that, um, really customizing the nodes and making the cool stuff happen for this game. Um, but we do need to do a little bit more cleanup work, I realized, um, in our last video. And there's a couple things that I noticed in trying to play our game as it stands right now. The first one is that when we, um, when we start our game, we notice that uh, none of the all of the colliders are all active at that first the first moment we start the game, which isn't really ideal. If we had you know, say a collider way out here somewhere that um, we shouldn't be able to reach yet, but it was still accessible and visible, we wouldn't want that. We want to make sure that we're only activating where we first are. So that's one thing we're going to solve. And then the other thing is that, and this is just more of an oversight on my part, was that we never quite finished wiring up all of our nodes together so that if we were to say go to this table over here and then we turn around to try to go back to this one here, well, we can do it right now, but I believe if we went here and then went to this cube and then back and now we turn around, we can't get there. Um, and that's because when we go click on the table, and look at its reachable nodes. We only have this, the cube and the sphere. We don't have the uh, we don't have the uh, center of the room location. So we need to make sure that those are all wired properly. So let's start with that. We'll stop our game here, and so we're going to start with um, room center. We're going to look at this one, and that we want to just be able to go to the table and to this box in the corner. We have both of those. We are good there. For the table. We've got the cube and the sphere that are on the table that we see right here in the game view, but we do want to make sure that we also have the room center. So what we can just do is grab this room center node and drag it into this reachable nodes. Make sure you are in the table when you do that. Likewise, for the corner box, all we have is the uh, prop that we put on top of it. We did not include the room center there either. So once again, we're just going to quickly click and drag that in. Be careful because if you just click this first, it'll go to itself, so you don't want to necessarily be dragging the room center onto itself. But just make sure and kind of quickly breeze through your uh, different nodes and make sure they have the connections to what they need. So next, it's going to be uh, turning off the colliders when we first start the game. For that, we're going to jump over into Mono Develop and go into our node script, our core node script, because this is going to happen for no matter what kind of node it is. And so where we, once we get our collider, we just want to make sure that's um, disabled. And so how we do that is we say call dot enabled equals false. And so that means now when we start the game, all of the colliders are going to be disabled immediately. The other thing we're going to want to do is make this an awake function, not a start function. And you're, I'll explain the reason for that in just a second. So the problem right now, though, is if we were to start our game, we wouldn't be able to do anything because all of our colliders are going to be disabled. We need to know where we are starting, and once we know where we're starting, we can then say, oh, in that location, the reachable nodes should still be reachable. And that's why we're making this awake, because first everything's going to be turned off, and then the stuff that should be on will be turned on. If we had this as start, there's a risk that um, nodes might get turned off after they should have been turned on. So how we're going to um, determine where we're starting is we're going to make a public node in our, uh, in our inspector. So we're going to say public node starting node. And that's going to give us a slot in the inspector that we can drop any node we want. It could be a location, it could be a, a prop, wherever you want to have the player start at the level. And then the other thing we just quickly have to do is we're going to add a start function. And it's going to say void start. Awake always happens before start, so that's how we know that this awake function of disabling the collider will happen after this start function. And all we need to do for that is say current node dot arrive, same as we would with any other. Um, <clears throat> and so what that's going to do is have our camera go to where the current node is, where that start, oh sorry, not current node, that would have been bad, starting node, because when we start the game there is no current node. Um, starting node arrive there so that'll make it the current node um, and it will make sure that all of our colliders that are reachable 
are um, active. So now we can go back into Unity, and if we go to our game manager, we'll see that we should get, there we go, our starting node to appear. And we'll start in the center of the room. So I'm gonna click that, drag that into there. Pops into there, so now when we hit play, we should see that the table and the, if I click here, the tables collider and the boxes collider are active, but the can on top of the box shouldn't be, and neither should either the cube or the sphere over here. So let's hit play. And sure enough, you might have seen that dim right there. Those two are not active, and neither is that, but the two places we can get to are. And so now if we go into our game and say we click onto this table, we see that these two brighten up because they are now accessible to us. And likewise, the room center has lit up as well because it's a place that we can go back to. So if we were to turn around in our scene view and click here, we go right back. So that's all for this video. We now have our network working the way we want it to. It's functioning exactly as we needed to, that we can walk around our room. We're never going to get locked into a dead end. So now we can start actually looking at our nodes, particularly our props, and saying, well, how can we make this so that, you know, maybe there's a book and we want to look at what's written in the book, or maybe there's a, um, you know, a puzzle box or something that we want to be able to rotate our view around, or any number of other things that we could do. There could be buttons and switches that affect things elsewhere, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to start diving into that a little bit in our interactable props in our next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.